Welcome to this first video reviewing some of the interesting case studies I encountered as a golf coach during 2012. This film focuses on the swing motion and ball flight of Nico, a scratch handicap player who I've taught for the last 15 years. The analysis comprises three groups of information. High speed video footage, Trapman radar, and finally, the sting in the tail, Sam Balance Lab data which shows us Nico's centre of pressure movements, or in layman's terms, his weight transfer during the swing. I think you'll enjoy this film most if you watch it in full screen view. This is Nico hitting a driver, and I've cut out some swing stills so we can look at his movement in more detail. I've been using Trackman Radar since 2010. And since then I've taught most of my players two different impact positions. One impact position is for the driver only and promotes an upward angle of attack which maximises distance. The second impact position is for all other clubs with the exception of the putter and promotes a downward angle of attack. To promote the upward hit or angle of attack we see Nico with the ball position far left in his stance but his head is still behind the ball. This is something we've worked on for the past couple of years. As the swing begins, we see the movement of a young athlete. The arm swing the club pretty much straight back, the shoulders turning slightly, but the pelvis remaining pretty still. Interestingly enough, in years gone by, Nico has always said he struck the ball best when he felt his core stayed tight and centered over the ball on the backswing. When we look at Nico's Sam Balance Lab data later, those swing feelings he has will make even more sense. At the top of the backswing, we see pretty much a one plane position with the left arm and shoulder plane closely matched. I do like to see this position with most of my players. Nico has held his bottom back on the backswing, so there's no air extension of the pelvis, and his head movement really has remained to a minimum on the backswing. As the downswing begins, the driving and leading of the left pelvis and knee toward the target causes the shaft plane to flatten slightly. How is this for lag? The holy grail for most amateur golfers. In the next two photos, we can see great sequencing of the body and X-factor stretch as Nico's lower half unwinds to the left of target while the shoulders remain aiming to the right of target. Nico has always pulled his right heel off the ground quickly on the downswing and he's always hit a draw. Interesting too is a little bit of pelvic L extension we see, the result of which will show itself in his trapman numbers later. Post impact, and we can see how the shoulders have caught up with the pelvis and the direction of shoulders and pelvis is now much more similar than it was on the downswing. We saw the big X-factor stretch at the start of the downswing and sure enough that's been followed by a fast snap back of the upper body as the pelvis has slowed and slung shot its power up the torso and into the club head at impact. And at the finished position we see Nico in a balanced position as with most good players. So what impact conditions and ball flight does Nico's driver swing produce? Well, we see an average angle of attack of plus 4.2 degrees and an average spin loft of 8.7 degrees, which Trackman tells us is pretty good for optimising total distance based on Nico's club head speed of 176 kilometres per hour. For those of you unfamiliar with Trackman, spin loft is the angle created between the angle of attack and the loft of the club at impact. The greater the spin loft, the more backspin is produced, the shorter the shot will generally be. I would say at this time, the pronounced upward hit of 4.2 degrees is created by Nico keeping his head behind the ball, but also because of the slight L extension of the pelvis Nico displays on his downswing. We also see Nico's clubhead path is plus 2.7 degrees 
which means the club comes 2.7 degrees from the inside to the ball at the moment of impact. And the club face is 0 0.3 degrees right of target, or 2.4 degrees close to the path the club is swinging on. With these numbers, Nico should hit a right to left curve all day long. The distance have been normalised because we had a strong headwind during our testing, but it's an average carry of 245 metres or 270 yards, with total distance being 272 metres or 300 yards. These numbers were gained using good quality two-piece range balls. I think this is where today's analysis gets really interesting and I must say these findings weren't what I was expecting back in April 2012 when I did this testing with Nico. In golf, the centre of pressure is a point on the ground and it indicates the average location of where the body mass pushes against the ground at any given moment. We can also call the centre of pressure, or COP, the body's balance point. As a hypothetical example, if Nico were to stand and swing while balanced on his right foot only, the COP location would remain directly under his right foot during the course of his swing, because his whole body mass is balanced above that point, and all of this force pushes down from that single location. As soon as we stand on two feet, the COP location will normally be somewhere between the two feet. We've used the yellow arrow to highlight the COP location during Nico's swing, and what we see is how far left the COP location is at address. This is actually easier to achieve than you may think. If the pelvis is pushed to the left at the address position, the COP location will normally move to the left also. Remember that old chestnut about loading into your right side on the backswing to gain power? Well, if we follow the yellow arrows, we see Nico's COP stays left, and there's actually no loading of the right side in this powerful golf swing. I must also say this is something I've never taught Nico and I wasn't aware of before we did this testing. Remember I said that Nico had always felt he struck the ball best when his core stayed tight and centred over the ball on the backswing? Well, feel does seem to be real in Nico's case. At impact, we see the COP or body balance point still where left but also well out towards Nico's toes, which, if we think of Laura Davis or Bubba Watson, does seem to be a trait of some long hitters. Remember, Nico is hitting this ball four degrees in the upswing. The model we often read about tells the centre pressure should be in the middle of the left foot, halfway between the left toe and left heel. My experience the last 12 months shows me this is very difficult to achieve, even with the best players. And at the finish position, we see Nico's COP pretty much where it was at the address position. Where left, but now centred between the heels and the toes. This film isn't an advert for a certain swing system, but for me as a golf coach, its results have forced me to look again at what I coach and also what I say to my students. Interestingly, I'm aware of only two of my students who hold their centre of pressure or body balance point to the left during the swing, but they are also two of my best ball strikers. I understand that some may say the Sam Balance Lab wasn't calibrated properly, but it was. And I had Nico move around to different positions on the mat. I recalibrated the system several times, but we kept getting the same COP movements you have seen here. I can imagine the content of this film will cause some online debate and I do look forward to being part of that debate. Until next time, this is Ian Peake. Keep swinging.